might um might get get going. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm Tamara King, um, the member relationship manager at Uni Sport. Uh, for those that don't know me or haven't seen me, um, and we appreciate you joining us for today's session on fundraising for your club. I might ask um, everybody to maybe switch off your cameras and put yourself on mute um, just for this starting part of the presentation, just to keep it um, nice and easy. And please um, use the chat function if you want to ask questions as we go throughout the presentation. And there'll be time at the end to ask some questions as well. So um, if you could all do that, that would be fantastic. I'll now uh, would like to welcome Ryan, um, Ryan Holloway from the Australian Sports Foundation, who will be leading today's session. The Australian Sports Foundation is Australia's leading profit sports fundraising organisation and charity. Over the past 30 years, the um, Australian Sports Foundation has distributed hundreds of millions of dollars to thousands of Australian sporting clubs to help develop an inclusive and active sporting nation and strengthening local communities. And Ryan is the National Partnerships Director who heads up a team of sports partnership managers at their sports foundation um, that assist clubs and organisations with structuring and executing their fundraising campaigns. So with that all said, I might throw to you, Ryan. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. Um, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks to Unisport for, for having us today to be able to present to you guys. Um, I might, uh, I'll jump into the presentation, so I'll just share my screen. Um, and get everything up. So, uh, yeah, today just going to run through um, a bit of a presentation uh, on the Australian Sports Foundation, who we are, uh, what we do, um, and then also some examples for uh, um, what some university clubs are currently doing uh, in our space and with us, um, and also some ideas around fundraising and how you guys can get involved. Um, to start off, we'll take a look at sort of the, the background on the Australian Sports Foundation, have a look at the philanthropic market in Australia um, and the opportunity that is out there for sport. Um, as Tamara mentioned, if you do have any questions uh, as we go through the sections, I'll, I'll pause and um, sort of take some questions, but then also at the end of the presentation, uh, leave it open um, to to take some questions as well. So. Without uh, without further ado, we'll we'll get into it. So um, I've got a short video here on the Australian Sports Foundation that shows who we are and what we do. So we'll take a look at that to kick us off. The Australia Sports Foundation is a not-for-profit organisation, and our role is to raise money for sport in Australia. Sport is one of the most impactful ways to improve lives and to strengthen communities. It teaches really important life skills, teamwork, leadership, resilience, and I guess most importantly, it builds social cohesion. It brings communities together. Australia is one of the most multicultural nations on earth. Sport is a great way to people from different backgrounds playing together and knowing each other. We help get money into sport uh, in two ways. We work with sports clubs, community clubs all over Australia to help them run fundraising campaigns where donors can get a tax deduction by making that donation through us, but for the benefit of their local club or their favourite sport. Secondly, uh, we raise money ourselves and we use that money to fund grant programmes where we invest the money in helping get more Australians active through sport. It could be disadvantaged Australians, people from remote rural and regional communities, people with disability, or people who simply can't afford the rego, the kit and equipment to play sport. Because uh, at its heart, uh, we believe Australia is a country where everyone should play sport. So that's uh, a little bit of a snapshot into who the Australian Sports Foundation are. So as we said, uh, and as my said at the top, we're um, the leading not-for-profit uh, for sport in Australia, and our purpose is to, to raise money for sport. 
Um, sorry, guys, I will just, just in the presentation, if you are on Teams, and I don't know if, but if you can just hit your mute button, um, if that's all right, if you're not already on mute, um, that'd be great. But yeah, so as we say, with the, um, with the Sports Foundation, we believe that sports an integral part of the Australian culture and is at the heart of every community. Um, we think that sports got a, a very special position within society to bring people together and create connectivity um, for for a number of different communities and on all different levels. Um, and we believe that there shouldn't be any barriers to participation uh, to sport in Australia, whether that's your abilities, uh, your socioeconomic status. We believe that everybody should uh, should be able to access uh, the benefits of sport. Um, there's a few different ways that we go about our business. Uh, the essential one and the one that we'll concentrate on today uh, for the university sports clubs is our platform. So we're, it's the assistance uh, for fundraising campaigns um, that you guys might have to help for the development of any sporting need um, that your club or your university might have. Um, that platform is very much uh, online dedicated to helping you guys raise as much money as you can for your sports club. Um, we're also the cause, though. We believe that, um, that that sport is an important philanthropic cause and we're out there um, raising money for grassroots sport. And as part of that is to advocate uh, and lobby um, different bodies for funding into sport. Uh, and we can do that through our, our charitable status as well, the Australian Sports Foundation Charitable Fund. Um, that has a focus on um, developing charitable purposes through the medium of sports. So there's things like the advancement of health, the advancement of education, um, the reduction of discrimination between groups. And then we've also got um, our partnerships that we do uh, with various organisations, but also the partnership that we have with you guys, our sporting clubs, to make sure that you've got someone there uh, to support you uh, through this because fundraising uh, is a difficult thing to do, but it's uh, it can be made uh, a lot simpler and it can be done a lot more effectively. Uh, so that's what we're there to to do is to help you guys uh, get the most out of that. So I thought it'd be good to have a look um, straight up at the uh, the philanthropic giving market in Australia. So it's, um, can have uh, an idea of the opportunity that is out there for sport, not just university for sport, but uh, for sport in general. Um, so in Australia, there's about $10.65 billion a year that people donate. Um, 6.2 of that comes from corporate Australia. Um, ancillary funds, uh, so private ancillary funds, public ancillary funds, trusts and foundations account for about $1.3 billion. And the rest of it, the 3.1, comes from uh, everyday taxpayers. So as you can see there from the stats, around 35% of taxpayers in the country uh, make a tax-deductible donation per annum. Um, if we have a look at where that money has gone, um, the bulk of it obviously goes to a lot of the charities and things like that that we have in the country, health charities, um, you know, the various different uh, organisations that are out there. Uh, but the one sector that we believe is a really good measuring stick uh, for sport is the arts sector. Um, so if we have a look at the arts, you're talking things like the Australian Ballet and, and things like that in there. The arts sector pulled down around 3% uh, of the philanthropic market in the country. Uh, if we compare that to the $45 million that we raised um, last financial year for sport, it's less than 0.5% of the market. So I think everybody on this uh, on this um, this team's meeting today could probably argue that uh, sport is just as culturally significant as the arts and just as good a cause to give to as the arts sector. So when you compare that, I mean, the arts, when you compare that 3% equates to about 280 to $300 million in, uh, in donations and gifts given to the arts sector. Um, the reason I think that sport can learn from the arts is that we're, we're not too loosely aligned. So we've, we've got some, some good commonalities there. Uh, and the trends that we're seeing, these are some of the trends that we're seeing in the arts is that their corporate sponsorship dollars are, are definitely on the way down. Um, there's less there's less money out there to be had through sponsorships. Um, there's a tend towards people giving value in kind um, rather than money, um, particularly in a sponsorship sense. Um, but on the flip side, philanthropic donations uh, are on the rise. So people actually giving to the arts sector. Um, fundraising is a, a huge chunk of the arts revenues. Um, and it costs far less to service a, a donor 
um, than it would to service a corporate partner with deliverables and things like that. Um, the arts also, their staff, if we ever look at um, some of the, the staff that make up um, different arts organisations, they've got more people focused on donations and philanthropy than they do on uh, sponsorship uh, or other means of, 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 uh, of revenue raising. So for us, it's about sport having a look at fundraising as an untapped revenue stream. Um, that we probably haven't thought about as much. If you have a look at the um, at the sponsorship market, which uh, the sports sponsorship market in the country, and and granted this does take in a lot of the high level sports as well, your professional sports, your NRLs, your AFLs, your Super Netballs, that sort of thing. Um, but it also goes right down. So it's around 735 million across the country. There, you compare that with the philanthropic market, which is 10.65 billion. And uh, there's a really good opportunity for sport to rethink the way that we do things and have a look at um, uh, philanthropy as being a really good revenue stream um, for for our sector. Uh, if we have a look at when people donate, so donations that come through the Australian Sports Foundation on this next slide, it's probably no surprise um, that the end of financial year <coughs> is a big is a big motivator for people uh, getting their monies in and a lot of uh, campaigns are run around that uh, end of financial year time. So for the month of June last financial year, the Australian Sports Foundation did 32% of our entire year's worth of donations. Um, so tax time still plays a big part in, in when people are going to give and that is right across every sort of philanthropic sector and sport where obviously no, uh, we're no different, no exclusion to that. Um, what we would like to see, however, is for for those um, other months to to pick up, particularly uh, in the sports sports area of fundraising. Um, just wanted to cover off on exactly what a tax deductible donation is uh, through the Sports Foundation. So that's a very much a, a textbook um, sort of explanation there. But uh, in Australia, anything that is given to a deductible gift recipient or a DGR, which the Australian Sports Foundation is that's over the value of $2 uh, is eligible for a tax deduction. Uh, and most of those gifts are claimed uh, for the tax year in which um, that income um, or that gift was made. Um, for a donation to come through the Australian Sports Foundation, it does have to be a gift. Um, donations are made unconditionally and voluntarily by people. Um, they don't return any material benefit. They don't form part of contracts or agreements. Um, you can't package up a membership or a registration fee and call it a donation. Uh, you can't package up a levy for a tour or anything like that and call it a donation. Um, but you can fundraise to help reduce those costs for people. Um, and also the other thing is, uh, and we get asked this a lot, is that uh, raffle tickets and auction items, um, they're not tax deductible because people actually have a chance to, uh, to win something or, or get a prize at the end. So um, just wanted that to, to be out there so you guys can uh, can get an understanding of exactly what a tax deductible donation is. Um, just before I move on to this next section, uh, were there any sort of questions there on that, um, on that section there? If we're all good, I'll, uh, I'll keep motoring through. Um, so how to become a fundraising partner of the Australian Sports Foundation. Um, so what we've tried to do is make this process as easy as possible. Um, we really try and aim to make fundraising uh, as straightforward and simple for you guys as we possibly can. We've moved a lot of our things online. So to register with us, you would have seen the link there at the end of that video, but you can visit our website, um, sportsfoundation.org.au. You'll see at the top of the page, there's a sign up now button that you can click. You go through there, there's an online registration process um, that you can fill out. And then we basically give you access to the back end online fundraising portal where you control all of your um, fundraising activity. Um, you must be fundraising for sport within Australia uh, to register with us. Uh, so if it's tours to go overseas, that's fine, but it does need to be for an Australian sporting purpose. Most of you guys are universities within um, Australia anyway, so you shouldn't have any dramas there. Um, you'll also get a dedicated sports partnership manager, one of my team, that will be able to assist you uh, through the process. 
And the most important thing for fundraising is that can-do attitude. So fundraising, as I said, can be um, quite arduous, um, but you need to you need to really be able to have a positive mindset around it and and give it everything um, in order for your club to have some success uh, and reach the goals. So through the Australian Sports Foundation, we concentrate on fundraising for um, sports clubs and also individual athletes um, for anything that will help uh, enhance or develop sport within Australia. So for individual athletes, it's about assisting with their career uh, if they're on a path towards state or national representation. Um, and that's for things like specialised coaches, nutrition, training. Um, for clubs, it's for anything that's going to help develop sport. You see there's a list of just a few of the items there. Um, equipment, facility development, team travel, um, anything, you name it. If it helps develop sport in Australia, uh, you can fundraise for it through the Australian Sports Foundation. Um, so not only do we work with sporting clubs, we also work with community groups, um, local councils, schools and universities, um, hence speaking to you guys today. So we can help just about anybody as long as they're um, raising money to develop sport. So what do you get by signing up with the Australian Sports Foundation? We get access to um, our fundraising partner portal, which is uh, an online portal um, where you can control all of your fundraising activity. Uh, you get the ability to um, offer people the chance to donate and claim a tax deduction on anything over $2. Uh, you get a dedicated project uh, or campaign page um, for your fundraising activity um, and an online donation facility to take those donations. Uh, you get access to all of our tools and resources to help you with your fundraising. I mentioned the, uh, the sports partnership managers that are there that can assist um, with uh, with setting up your projects and, and with campaign ideas uh, all the way through. There's also the monthly distribution of the funds that you raise. So any money that you raise through the Australian Sports Foundation on any given month uh, is then distributed back out to your nominated bank account. So if you raise funds, say, from the 1st to the 31st of any given month, they will be in your nominated bank account by the 15th of the following month. Um, We've also got a number of different exclusive partner offers through various organisations uh, that we partner with that can give you um, either discounts or rebate options for uh, for things like travel or equipment uh, and different things like that as well. So we are working with a number of university partners at the moment uh, on various fundraising activity and I will just take you across to our website at the moment to see if I can uh, show you some examples uh, of other, what other universities are doing if it'll just allow me to switch over screens. Bear with me for one second guys. Technology is going to let me down here. Hang on a second. Tamara, can you see that at all? It's popping up every now and then. Yeah. Is it the the website there or the yeah the um yeah website with the uni sport example perfect all right that's what i want so let me see if i can get that back all right 
Are we got that there now? It is showing now, yes. Great. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so this is our website. This is a fundraising partner page uh, that we've got for Unisport. So Unisport, as the governing body, are uh, raising funds uh, to help deliver sports to universities uh, like yours and the sporting programs. That is one. What I wanted to to sort of show you guys here was the way that we can structure it because we've had a number of university clubs that register their club individually, which is fine, but then we've also had a number of university sporting bodies that have registered with us and then they have uh, various sporting projects that come underneath that. Um, so I mentioned before, through the Australian Sports Foundation, you have to be fundraising for the development of sport. Um, we can do that on an ongoing basis as well. So you don't have to have a specific project where it might be you need to buy some equipment to start your season. You can actually fundraise uh, to help future-proof your club as well and also to have funds available to your club um, for when things do arise, whether that's a facility development, uh, the need for some new coaches, um, the need for new equipment. So I'll show you a couple of examples, and this is just a few of what some of our uh, university fundraising partners are doing. Um, hopefully you can see that one there. That's ANU Sport. So ANU Sport are using this for a range of uh, of their sporting clubs that they need to raise funds for. A lot of this uh, primary fund will help with different infrastructure things, boat fleet renewals for their rowing club and, and so on and so forth. But down here, they've also got then specific sporting club um, projects and specific sporting um, projects. So they've got... The fleet renewal for the Roman club there that you've seen, they've got a scholarships program, um, they've got their Australian Rules Football Club that are underneath there as well. So that allows ANU Sport to um, control um, some of the, the distribution of the funds through that major sports projects fund, but then anything that's donated to these sub-projects down here must go to the AFL club or the rowing club or the scholarship program. So um, each of those different avenues uh, has their own stream through the back end of the system um, and can be controlled. So they, they may have a representative from the Australian from the Australian Rules Club that can jump on there and coordinate that particular um, project. What we've done with other universities, this is uh, Newcastle University's rugby club. Um, they've just got their own project there. Uh, so the seahorses are registered there to do their own fundraising for all their various grades from Colts right through to their opens. Um, this is, um, they've called it a foundation. It's an overarching project where they can raise funds and then use it for anything that's going to help the club. So whether they need a new scrum machine, whether they need a new, um, uh, new goalpost pads, whatever it may be. So all of the funds raised through there can go there. Um, Another one that we're working with as well is uh, Vic Uni. So they've got their uh, women's sports scholarship fund. So uh, obviously going towards female um, university goers there um, that have uh, an interest in, participate in, and want to be leaders in uh, in sports. So um, that's just a few of the examples. We are working with a number of different universities on that. Um, and as I say, the projects can vary from very specific that they need a particular thing um, within a certain time frame or a more general, more broad fundraising program where they're continually um, looking to get donations through uh, to help with their club. So hopefully I can a little bit easier head back to our slides. While, while you're navigating that, Ryan, I've just had a question pop up um, yep. from Sam at UTS. Will clubs get notified for each donation? If so, will they be given the details of the person that donated? Yeah, great question. Um, each donation, we don't notify for each particular donation. However, in the, the fundraising portal um, that uh, that we give clubs access to, they will be able to see uh, who's donated, how much they've donated, and when they've donated. And that's super important. I'll get onto that in a little bit, but that is super important um, to make sure that because once someone gives you a gift, the first thing you want to do is thank them. Uh, you want to make sure that, uh, that their money goes towards the project that they've donated to, um, and then you want to take them on that journey as well. So 
I'll get into a little bit of that later. But yes, the the online fundraising portal that you get access to um, once that sign up and application registration process is done has everything in there um, to show you uh, what to do and how to manage uh, your fundraising. So at the end, if I can uh, pull up an example of one, um, I'll do that. That might uh, be helpful for everybody as well. So then we start to get into um, the fun part and that's looking to create your fundraising um, plan and, and strategy for how your club might go about it. And trust me, I understand uh, a lot of the clubs where we're juggling either full-time work, study, um, family, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of the clubs are volunteer run and that's, that's really where we step in is that we understand grassroots sport. We understand the challenges that come from running uh, sporting clubs at all different levels and um, what we try and do here is give you some some ideas to think about uh, and then we can work with with you individually to, to help develop it for your club but um, like anything you need to plan um, plan it out and fundraising is no different I'm sure all of your clubs have a, a plan around whether it's re registration and membership um, any sponsorships that you might be attracting you've got a plan around that and fundraising as a source of revenue um, needs to needs to have a, a similar sort of concentration as well. Um, so for your fundraising strategy, it must align with your club's overall objectives. If it doesn't and it sits in isolation, it will fail. Uh, it needs to be bought into. Um, you need to have clear goals and objectives and use your environment, use the, the data that you guys are collecting, what you're hearing to help refine your plan and modify it. It should be a working document and uh, and constantly getting updated. Key components for your fundraising strategy, a really solid case for support. I can't stress that um, enough. Fundraising is all about storytelling. You really got to have a clear case for support. Why should people be donating to you? Why are you getting into the fundraising space? Um, what you're going to achieve for your club at the end of it? Um, you should outline the requirements that will make your fundraising a success. So is it that you got the equipment to, to play the sport or is it that you got more people participating, more people registering to play your sport uh, at your university club? Make sure that you've got the requirements outlined there. In terms of the contents, well, clear roles and responsibilities. So who's going to be uh, responsible for what within the club to help uh, kickstart and, and get your fundraising going? Do a little bit of a SWOT analysis uh, around the club, um, where the opportunities and threats might lie um, and how you can probably navigate the environment you're operating in to, to best um, gain donations out of the people you might be contacting. Um, and show how people, as I said before, how will success be measured? Is it X amount more players registered for the club? Is it that you got uh, you know, a new scrum machine for your rugby club, whatever it may be? Um, Success strategies for success in this space, beg, borrow, and steal in the fundraising space. So, if you've seen a great idea um, somewhere else, adapt it to your sports uh, fundraising, your club's fundraising, and and lean on the sports foundation in that as well. We can always provide feedback and and what's possible through us. Um, you need to have one to one approaches to connect with uh, your potential donors, particularly those that you might be asking for a significant um, sum of money from. It's always good that they have a personal relationship with somebody at the club or the person that's uh, doing the ask. Um, that's really important. Uh, and workshop, get some ideas from uh, across your club, like a wide scope. So talk to your coaches, talk to your players, um, talk to the people that, that have a passion for your club about what would motivate them um, to get them um, either asking people and advocating for you guys and getting donations or actually giving uh, themselves. So the uh, the keys to it are to have engaged stakeholders. So all members of the club need to be on board with it. So whether that's coaching and support staff, alumni that might still be involved with the club, playing with the club, whatever it may be, uh, your participants, everybody that's involved in your club needs to be on board with with fundraising as a revenue stream. Um, identifying your, your potential <coughs> targets, so who are those donors going to be, what networks do you have around your club? Uh, what uh, What's your membership base? What's that local community look like? Could you approach local businesses from a donation standpoint rather than a sponsorship standpoint? Um, what does the alumni look like? Are there people that are out there that 
are still passionate about um, the university that they attended, the club that they played for. Where are they in life now? Would they give to um, continue the the growth and, and prosperity of that club? Uh, and then have an integrated approach. So your fundraising needs to be part of your everyday operations as a club. So include it in your newsletters, your social media, try and incorporate it into your events and game days where you can. Uh, and we can assist with things like that. One of the ideas that I'll touch on later around uh, fundraising ideas is add-on donations. Um, and we've seen that happen for, for things like sportsman's lunches or whatever it may be, where a request for a donation is added on to a ticket price uh, and things like that. And there's no better time um, to ask people for a donation than when they've already got their hand in their pocket. Now, I mentioned that uh, storytelling is the single most important thing in fundraising and that's really around developing that case for support so you've got to be clear on why the club is getting into the fundraising space what are the what are the objectives what do you want to get out of it at the end um be informative with your case for support and with your storytelling um and try and excite people about the you know what their donation will bring your club um you need to you need to incorporate um the ask into that story somewhere so people need to clearly be able to know where to go to donate so if we're sending an edm around to your club members make sure you've got the link there to your online uh, donation facility um, via the australian sports foundation so that they know exactly where to go uh, to help you guys out so the need urgency be authentic make it meaningful and relatable to your donors and don't forget to incorporate and ask and that's generally how you can develop a really good case for support. In terms of your fundraising targets uh, and target setting, they've just got to pass the SMART test. You know, make sure they're specific. You can measure them. They can be attainable. I mean, every club would like a million dollars. That's absolutely bang on. Um, but is that really attainable by your club? Make sure that you get it at a level um, where people, it doesn't scare donors or think that, well, how's my $50 going to help when they need $2 million? Um, make sure you just break it down into attainable little goals. And if you go over, perfect. Um, be relevant to them. Show, as I say, in that case for support, show how it's going to benefit your club and try and put some time limit on it if you can, um, specifically if it's around a, like a, a piece of equipment or something that you might need. So the example that you can see there in the slide is, you know, raising $50,000 um, to complete the fit out of a gym so that they can start their season. So, um, yeah, just nice and, and specific goals and make sure you've got them there. Uh, communicating your fundraiser and your fundraising campaign. So once you've developed that story, you need to get it out there, right? So it needs to be shared and shared again over and over. So in all of your communication channels, as I mentioned, social media, website, EDMs, um, any traditional media, particularly if you've got a, a decent story, um, potentially there's a university publication that might be able to, to assist you with it, but then also local communities that you operate in as well. Um, you know, it might be a, a case of reaching out to the local newspaper, um, particularly if you've got a really good story to, to tell, if you're doing uh, a scholarship program like we saw for, for Vic Uni around uh, female sports scholarships, or it could be Indigenous scholarships, or uh, it may be that you're looking to get uh, more disability sports uh, enabled at your university and things like that. Uh, and then make sure you've got a content plan for your fundraiser. So when you hit a milestone, make sure you share that. That's a, that's a really sort of um, shout out from the rooftops type moment uh, where you want to make sure that those donors that have given um, know that they've helped you achieve a goal. Um, so that's very briefly just sort of how to create on some of the elements that you go into your fundraising plan. Um, now I just want to share with you guys some fundraising ideas and what we've seen uh, from a number of the different clubs that we work with um, and might just get you thinking about how you could incorporate some fundraising into, into what you're doing. So I mentioned um, just previously the add-on donations. Uh, this is where you request a donation into an existing transaction. So whether that's a, a ticket purchase, a membership purchase, uh, merchandise, um, events, we can help you incorporate the ask for donation uh, into into those um, into those transactions. Um, 
the good part about this is we don't have to send the donors to the donation page to make the donation and then somewhere else to to purchase the ticket or whatever it may be. You guys get to collect that whole um, amount and then we work with you on the back end to have those uh, that are those donated amounts transferred across along with the donor details uploaded into your portal and we receive them for that um, and they'll get the receipt for, for whatever donated portion um, they've selected to do. As I mentioned earlier, it can't replace a membership fee or a registration fee, but we can add it on. So, for example, if registration is $100, um, we might be starting an equipment fund for our club so that we're ensuring that we've got um, new equipment each season or replacing old equipment. Um, so we might ask our members for $150, and that'll be $100 to cover their um, registration and membership and $50 to go towards the Australian Sports Foundation uh, equipment fund project that you've got set up. Um, it's got to be an opt out. Um, they've got to be able to opt out and, and, and click a box to, to opt in. So we can't just have it preset for them um, because it needs to, to pass the, the donation of being a gift. Um, and we do need to receive the full amount of the donations that are taken as the deductible gift recipient. We need to take it in order to pass it back to the club. Um, one little success story that we've got there is the Northbridge Football Club. Their aim was to try and reduce um, the cost of representative football to their family so that uh, so the kids that may not necessarily be able to afford it still had the opportunity to play. Uh, so at registration time, they added a donation on um, for, for people to donate in uh, to reduce the levies that would come out from any representative football. Um, that resulted in over fifty thousand dollars being raised for that particular club to go towards their representative program. So, um, drastically reduce the levies. Anybody who's <coughs> involved in in soccer in football knows that those representative registrations are rather expensive, uh, particularly for the younger kids as well. It can be upwards of two and a half thousand dollars. So that was a really good, um, a really good fundraising campaign for those guys and help them uh, offer. That representative program to more than than those that could just afford it. Another uh, another uh, fundraising idea are donor legacy programs. So this is where people who donate um, want to feel that recognition and want to be um, really acknowledged for the contribution that they've made. Um, not everybody is going to to want to have them up in lights but those there are some that might so there's different ideas that you can do there honor boards buy a brick campaigns name recognition um, within the club somewhere all of that is tax deductible through us um, because you know if you buy a brick it's going to stay in the facility so they're not actually getting anything material or tangible they're just getting recognition um, a good success story that we've seen there was through canberra baseball they did a buy a brick campaign for the development of their new ballpark uh, you can see an example of one of the bricks there basically did the commemorative bricks towards the entry of the uh, of the new facility. So far, that project's raised uh, 20K. I think they're aiming for uh, 50 to 100,000 um, for that particular initiative. So um, they're on their way. But um, those donor legacy things uh, can, can play into your favour and, and everybody likes to have their name up in lights every now and again. The donations of goods and property is another one. So through the Australian Sports Foundation, we are able to take uh, donations of goods and property and offer the donor a tax deduction. Um, so if we were to talk sporting equipment, for example, um, uh, let's say Sharon Footballs wanted to donate a bunch of footies for uh, an AFL program, they would be able to get a tax deduction by donating those footballs to the Australian Sports Foundation for the benefit of that club and they would get the deduction on the market value at the time of that donation. Um, so we've taken a number of different uh, donations of goods and property through the Australian Sports Foundation, everything from sports memorabilia um, to, um, to vehicles to sports equipment. Um, we've even had some items donated to us that then clubs have gone and auctioned and raffled. Um, so although they don't, uh, they, the raffle tickets can't, be claimed as a tax deduction. The goods that were donated for the raffle can be, and so anything that they made on the raffle was just all profit because uh, their supplier or their uh, partner had already received the tax deduction on the good donated. So 
Um, one club that we've worked with really closely uh, through the donations of goods and property is the Balmain Power Rowing Club. They've had some rowing skulls, uh, a boat trailer and a four-wheel drive um, donated <coughs> via the Sports Foundation to help their program. It's basically about getting more uh, people with disability into rowing and they've had over $50,000 worth of goods and property uh, come through us to, to assist their program. So that's one to keep in the back of the mind uh, if you had any relationships with suppliers uh, or whatnot. Another fundraising idea are those seasonal appeals. Um, I mentioned earlier, you would have seen in the slide deck uh, the importance of end of financial year uh, and campaigns run around that time generally uh, tend to do fairly well. There are other um, seasonal appeals out there as well. You may have heard of Giving Tuesday. Um, funnily enough, Christmas time is a good is a good time to go out and ask because people are in that spirit of giving already. Um, any annual appeals that you might have through a club, whether you're celebrating a, a particular anniversary for the club, um, beginning and end of season style things. So for your summer sports, doing stuff in the lead up to those summer um, the summertime in winter um, for the for when those seasons roll around, um, we've seen a a good opportunity taken up by a, a grassroots basketball club over in uh, Western Australia, the Willington Tigers. Um, they didn't end a financial year campaign. They were seeking 100 donors at $100, so 10000 The campaign got them uh, half of that um, through that time. So they used their social media. They got a lot of their kids staring down the barrel of an iPhone, um, talking about the facility that you can see in the pictures there on the screen, about how important that was to them and how that would help them and help the club. Um, deliver a good basketball program so that really sort of hit home with their donors and they were able to get half of their um you know their target for 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 the campaign through um just in a couple of weeks um worth of that so that's uh, a few of the fundraising ideas that we've got there um and it kind of brings me to the end of who the australian sports foundation are and what we do and how we can help so i'm happy to uh sort of open that up um, then for some questions from you guys and uh, try and answer those best I can. And um, hopefully if your club isn't already signed up with us, um, you'll be able to get on and, uh, and be able to do that. So just visit, as I said, the sportsfoundation.org.au uh, and hit that sign up button. Any questions or queries that you might have on that, um, feel free to either drop me an email or drop me a line. We'd be happy to have a chat. Thanks for that, Ryan. I'll throw it to the group. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them into the meeting chat. Um, I'll give everybody a couple of minutes to think about that while I throw one to you, um, Ryan, just given the um, uh, probably an obvious question, given the current environment, um, the current situation that we're in. Um, how have you found the initial impact um, in terms of you know, the ability to fundraise or the current fundraising programs happening, how has the, the current environment impacted that and how have the Sports Foundation responded to that? Yeah, look, it's it's <clears throat> no it's no secret COVID nineteen's had a like a catastrophic sort of impact on uh, on the sports sector. Absolutely. Particularly at grassroots level, there's a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of those clubs would have had membership and registration and even local level sponsorship coming through um, that they banked on and it's not there. So um, it's definitely had a, a really big impact. What we're doing uh, as a sports foundation and um, we might even be uh, sending some information out to you guys as well over the, the coming weeks is looking to really measure the impact that COVID-19 has had on the sports sector. And we're really advocating for uh, for funding to come through. So we're hopeful um, that we will have, you know, some um, some funding available there for clubs that have been impacted um, by these by these times. In terms of uh, donations, we've actually seen that um, they've remained quite steady, um, funnily enough, to, to a lot of their sports clubs. And I think that that's, you know, there's a range of people, obviously, that have been affected. There's people that have completely lost their jobs. There's those that have been stood down. And then on the other scale, the lucky ones are the ones that have been able to, to maintain their employ. Um, and we found that there are still a lot of those people that are donating to their sports club and to uh, to their particular passion area to make sure that their clubs are viable. And and once, 
you know, this all clears and that their club is able to get up and running. So, um, yeah, we've definitely seen some impact from it. We're working really hard, particularly through the the charitable fund that I mentioned at the outset, to uh, to try and lobby and get as much funding in as we can to to hopefully run some some grant rounds where clubs like the guys that you've got on here today can apply uh, and get some funding. Yeah, fabulous. We haven't had any um, any other questions come through, Ryan, so I think you're off the hook <laughs> there. Uh, but appreciate you taking the time to take us through that today. Um, and if, as you said, if anybody has any questions, you've got Ryan's details there that they can follow up uh, directly. Yeah, did you want me to put that back up on screen? Um, Maybe just as the last thing. Yeah. Uh, as I say, like the, with the, that fundraising portal there as well, um, if anybody's got any questions on on that, um, more than happy to sort of give you a look at different examples um, and how that looks on the back end where you can track your fundraising activity and everything like that. But uh, they're, my, they're my details, email and, and phone number. So, um yeah, I've noticed there's, you know, some of the people that are on the call, the guys from UQ, we've got their rugby league club uh, is up and running on the platform as well. So, um, yeah, there's a few people that I can see just uh, by their email addresses that we're actually working with some of those universities um, and maybe some of the various clubs within those unis as well. So more than happy to have a chat about how we can uh, expand that and, and work with either – your body, uh, your university sports body or the individual clubs. Um, yeah. Thanks very much for having me. Appreciate it. Excellent. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that.